Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day so far and thanks so much for joining me for another art video. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing the watercolor painting process for a commissioned painting that I was asked to create for a wonderful couple that approached me to paint two of their Jeeps. This one is a 1990 Jeep Cherokee and the other one that I'm going to be working on probably at some point next week is a 1997 red Jeep Wrangler. I'm probably going to be filming that painting process as well but I won't be sharing it until later on. A because I have a wonderful challenge slash collaboration video coming up next Friday that I'm super excited about and B, because I don't want to have two car videos in a row, even though I do really enjoy painting cars. Don't get me wrong, I am not a car buff in any shape, way, or form. I am quite ignorant when it comes to cars, but I do love painting them, and older models especially kind of have this melancholic effect on me, probably because my father is a bit of a car buff himself, and he kind of uh, if there's anything positive that he transmitted to my brother, who is uh, one of my favorite people in the world, uh, it was his love of cars uh, to the point that my brother was basically uh, working on cars and fixing cars up when he was around 13 or 14 years old. By the time my brother was around 17 or 18 years old, he had already rebuilt an old Buick all by himself. My very first car ever was an 83 Ford Mercury and even though uh, <laughs> I don't consider that car to be very good at all, uh, it certainly had a lot of personality to it, I can tell you that. I also think that one of the reasons why I enjoy drawing and painting objects so much is because I grew up with movies like The Brave Little Toaster and TV shows and movies in which cars were coming alive and things like that. And so for me, in my head, objects around us could have a personality and an energy to them. For me, it's pretty sad to think about how we many times in our lives have to leave a house, leave the walls that have kind of protected us and we've built so many memories in for so many years. Uh, it's always kind of bittersweet to leave that object, that, that home, that car and kind of uh, changed it for a new one. Let me know in the comment section below if you can identify with this feeling or if you have ever gone through any interesting experiences in which you've had to leave something that you really loved, an object that you were really attached to behind. I would love to hear from you. I'm going to leave a link to an old video of another car painting that I created a while back in which I explain how I go about using masking fluid with watercolor. That link is going to be down below in the description box for you guys in case you want to go and check it out. With this painting, I didn't use any masking fluid at all. I'm just very carefully working around the areas of highlights that I want to keep protected and that I want to keep free of pigment. And as with all of my other watercolor paintings, I'm building up my darker values incrementally, working from very light and translucent and getting darker and darker as I go, making sure to create a very wide variety in both values and transparencies throughout my painting. I really wanted these paintings to be as similar to the owner's actual cars as possible. Um, unfortunately, they weren't able to send me good, full car, usable pictures for drawing or painting. They were only kind of sections showing of their cars. So I looked for a few different references of this exact same model and even added some details in that I was able to see from the pictures that they sent me from their own car, like the little lights on top and just uh, made them work with or alongside the reference pictures that I found. I knew since the beginning that I wanted to complement the uh, heavily detailed and more precise um, style of the car itself with a more organic and loose wet-on-wet -wet 
effect outside of it in its background. Because the car itself looks very static, I thought also creating these kinds of effects would bring an energy and a personality and interest to the piece. I also knew since the beginning that I wanted to incorporate a sort of vignette effect for the background, which basically means that instead of painting all the way to towards the edges of my painting, what I did was I created a very irregular shape that dissipated into the whiteness of the paper. You're going to see me work on all of these things near the end of the painting process after I have already finished painting the car. The second Jeep painting that I'm going to be creating, the Red Wrangler, I'm going to make sure that it's created in the same style and it's going to have the same background effects, similar background effects, because these two paintings are going to be displayed in the same room, side by side, and so it's important that they look like they belong together. The other painting is definitely going to be more colorful because the other Jeep is red. And so, uh, yeah, I'm excited to work on that next week. If you're interested in seeing how that goes, do make sure to follow me on social media because I share my progress on current projects, things I'm working on, thoughts, etc. on both Facebook and Instagram more frequently than I do here on YouTube. All of the watercolor painting supplies that I used to create this painting will be left down below in the description box for you with links. And if you choose to use my links, I'm going to be earning a tiny commission at no extra cost to you. And I am super thankful to everyone that chooses to use my links because those tiny earnings help me continue making videos and go back into this channel. All right, you guys, that is enough blabbering from me for today. I really need to get to work on a real-time tutorial that I am creating for Patreon members that is going up next week. And I also have a ton of prep work to do for my upcoming exhibit. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work on all that. I really hope that you enjoy the rest of this time lapse.
guys so so much for watching this video I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you got something from it or got inspired to try some of these techniques out for yourself if you enjoy this video I'd be super appreciative of a like because it really helps my channel get in front of more people don't forget to subscribe so that I can see you next Friday and talk to you soon